Color Sharpie flats. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is after you have printed your entire black and white edition of prints, uh, we are gonna do a wet wash to take out the old black ink. So the wet wash, remember, is lithotine and water. So you do a little puddle of water, a little puddle of lithotine, and then you pull out all that old ink. So that's gonna leave uh, a stain of your image there. And so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply border gum because it has some acid in it. And what this is gonna do is kind of knock back that old grease. Um, so I tight wiped after I did the border gum and now I'm gonna be creating a color plan of where I want all my colors to go. Um, the reason we have printed the, the key first is because we're actually printing kind of transparent flats over top of our key image. You can do this in reverse where you print the key on a piece of mylar and then use that to transfer it to another stone and then do the Sharpie flats on that. But uh, this way works just as well as long as we keep the inks transparent. So now I need to take off that border gum and I need to rinse out the sponge several times and go to the sink, back to the stone, to the sink, back to the stone until I know that there's no gum Arabic left at all on the surface. If there's anything left on top of the surface, it, it might block this Sharpie from going into the stone. So now I am going to Sharpie in the areas where I want my first color flat to go. So this one here, I'm doing this pink color that you can see is in this shape. And so what I like to do is I like to kind of trace around the outside edges of, of where my Sharpie's gonna go. And then I'll go back in and fill it all in. If I need a straight line, I'll use a ruler. Um, but you can see I'm, I'm making sure to go over this uh, multiple times to make sure I have a really thick coating of Sharpie. And you wanna use a fresh Sharpie for this, not some old one. So. Then I need to let the Sharpie dry for at least 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna apply border gum yet again to the stone. So once I put this on here, I'm gonna move it around to just cover the stone. I just need enough border gum just to cover the surface of the stone. Um, and then I'm gonna remove the excess with cheesecloth. I'm not doing a tight wipe here. If I do too tight of a tight wipe, it'll actually remove some of that Sharpie. So while it's sitting there under the um, the gum border gum film then i'm going to mix up my color i'm going to roll out my ink and remember that the color should have 25 to 50 percent uh, transparent base to the color that i've mixed up so now i'm going to roll up the image and proof it unlike with the black and white image the sharpie flats actually take very little rolling so you can see i made just one trip where i rolled up and back four times the first proof is always gonna be a little bit light, but then when I come to ink this up again, notice I rolled up and back twice. That was it, proofing. And then I can see that that is actually filled in pretty well. So now I can move to my good paper. Uh, you can see the difference between the first and the second. That second one's really solid. I don't want this to be too dark because it would cover up some of my black lines. So now I use my Mylar where I've printed my key image and I'm kind of testing to see what that color is gonna look like under there. If I'm happy with it, then I can move on to the, um, the actual edition. So then I'm gonna crank through all, however many prints I have. So after I'm done printing all those, then I'm gonna wet wash the stone again. So puddle of water, puddle of lithotine, and this is removing, remember, all that ink. But you'll notice that the Sharpie sticks around here. So I'm gonna sponge this off really well, apply border gum, tight wipe, and this time I will tight wipe really well. And then I'm gonna use uh, denatured alcohol or acetone to remove the Sharpie. If I do not put on that border gum and do the tight wipe, the Sharpie is gonna bleed all over the place and it's gonna make it impossible for me to see the image. So after that's done, then I will remove the gum with water, once again, being really thorough about that, and then I am going to move on to my next color. So if I can't see my lines anymore, this is where I use my Mylar guide. So I've lined up my T and bar of the Mylar with the 
TM bar on the stone, and then I use red iron oxide to transfer over the lines of where my next bit of my image goes. So from here, I am just gonna be repeating the rest of the steps um, for all my remaining colors. So you can continue to watch this and see how that process unfolds. But otherwise it would, it'll be the same steps that I, that I repeated between the first and second colors all the way until I, I finish up this image.